Hi everybody, my name is Gene Rosengord, and in today's demonstration I'd like to show you how I place gingival composites, in my case it's Gradia Gun Plus, onto restorations fabricated with Trilor frameworks and either zirconia crowns or some kind of pressed ceramic. Now first and foremost I'd like to thank Alien Milling for providing me with the framework and the crowns for this demonstration and GC America for providing me with composite. Now let's go ahead and take a look. We're starting off with a framework uh, fabricated in the thimble bar design and we're utilizing uh, zirconia crowns uh, with this particular restoration and it's going to be a full upper arch. Now for this uh, restoration we're going to be utilizing uh, Gradia Gum gingival composite. Uh, we will be cementing our crowns utilizing uh, GSEM Link Force composite cement which is dual cure. And for the primer, we're actually going to be using the G multi primer. In order for us to cement the crowns to the trial or framework, we need to prepare the framework for cementation. Usually, in my personal opinion, when the frame comes from the mill, it is already rough enough to where you don't have to touch it. But in case you feel like that is insufficient, you can either use 50 micron aluminum oxide at two bar pressure, after which you need to thoroughly clean it and desiccate the framework usually with hot air of some sort, or you can simply use a carbide burr or a silicone disc in order to get a slightly rougher result. As you can see right here, I'm using a silicone disc to slightly roughen up the surface in order to facilitate better cementation. It's always a good idea to double check and make sure your crowns are fitting properly after you have done any type of adjustment. Once that has been done, we're going to go ahead and apply our primer. In this case, like I said, we're using the G Multi Primer. Now the primer is applied to both the surfaces of the crown and the surface of the trial or framework. Uh, care should be taken not to let the primer sit too long because it will evaporate kind of quickly. Usually after the application to the crowns and to the trial or framework, you need to allow about 30 seconds for the primer to evaporate and you can go ahead and start with your cementation. Now for this uh, type of cementation, like I've mentioned previously, we're going to be utilizing the GSEM Link Force Cement. Now this cement actually comes in three different shades, the uh, translucent, the opaque and the A2. In this case I'm using the A2. Um, usually you want to use the tip and use uh, just enough material in the crown spraying it around so you can get a nice and proper cementation. As you can see right there I have a bunch of micro brushes sitting right next to me and that is used as you can see for removal of excess cement. You can never have enough micro brushes when it comes to cementation. Usually I end up using a single tip for the entire restoration and uh, it lasts you know the working time is long enough for me to do so. Uh, in this case, since I'm doing a single arch, I'm able to kind of just press the teeth in place. If you're doing a, uh, something with an opposing, you probably want to do this in an articulator. Since this is a dual cure cement, after you've placed all the crowns, go ahead and actually activate the, uh, the cement with a light cure unit. You don't necessarily have to do that, uh, but it does help and it will actually uh, set off the chain reaction for the entire thing to get cemented. The other alternative is just to kind of let it sit there for about 10 minutes for the whole cementation to take place. After the sufficient time has passed and the crowns are firmly cemented to your framework, it's time to prepare your framework for a composite application. Now you can either roughen up the framework again or leave it as is. When it comes to the zirconia crowns, it's a good idea to have those crowns to be glazed with a ceramic glaze because composite bonds a lot better to ceramic when you're utilizing a micro etching technique with a, uh, with a primer rather than bonding composite directly to zirconia that has been polished. Now in my case I uh, didn't prepare the surface of the trilor because I felt that I was sufficiently roughened. When it comes to the crown itself I decided not to roughen it up at this point because I will be using a composite glaze afterwards which will seal the margins and I will actually sandblast it at that point. As you can see right here, I'm actually applying my multi-primer to all the surfaces that I will be applying composite to and uh, making sure I'm very thorough because you don't want to miss any spots. 
Once I've done that, I will actually use my uh, gingival composite and place it on a special heated tray because heating composite actually works uh, better for adaptation and also makes the restoration a bit stronger, according to research. Now I'm using three main colors, but I'm using number one and number two mostly, actually mixing those two colors together. I will actually take number one, which is more red, and apply it in approximately. And as you can see, sometimes it can be a bit tricky because the composite likes to stick to the instruments rather than to your framework. One thing you can do is actually warm up your instruments a little bit or use a little bit of uh, modeling liquid. Here I'm using a silicone tip in order to adapt the composite interproximately. Once I've done that, I'm using a 50-50 mixture of number one and number two and applying it somewhere in the middle of the arch. Uh, once I'm going to finish doing that, I will take number one and apply it closer to the mucogingival junction and apply number two right at the CEJ and moving it slightly interproximately, blending all three colors together. Now, uh, for color number three, which is the lightest of them all, I generally don't use a lot of it. I will utilize it sometimes in order to thin out the colors or if I got a spot where it's a little bit too red, I will add some number three in order to kind of make it less intense as well. Uh, overall, it's a fairly simple technique, uh, utilizing just a couple of mixtures and a couple of colors. And as you can see, the adaptation is fairly simple and actually kind of relaxing, at least to me it is. Uh, once you've done one tooth, you just simply move on to the next area and keep adding to it without any kind of changes. Um, obviously, for different gingival types, you're going to be using different mixtures. And I've, I've done videos on the uh, different colors that you can be uh, creating by utilizing the luster paints and such. Here you can see that I'm adapting the, uh, the gingival roll around the tooth because it's important to have nice and clean margins. And I'm simply just adding a little bit more acrylic, uh, a, little, pardon me, a little bit more composite in the area just to give it some more texture and some more bulk. Once you've done that all the way through before curing it, I'm going to go through the whole thing again and make sure that it has been properly textured and I have a nice margin to it. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the, uh, the palatal surface, making sure that the adaptation is done correctly. And also, I'm taking a lot of care not to close off any access hole for our implant screws. Once you have applied all the layers of the composite, you want to go ahead and step cure it. Now, if you're doing several layers, you want to do a step cure between each one. Since I'm only doing one layer, I only need to cure it once, and I will do it for one minute in my Labolai Duo. Once that has been completed, I will apply my air barrier and place it back into the unit for the additional three minutes. As you can see right here, I'm applying the air barrier over the entire surface of the prosthesis, making sure that all the areas of the composite are covered. Once I do that, I will place it in the curing unit for three minutes and let it cure completely. Once that has been completed, I will take the prosthesis out, clean it thoroughly. I will actually sandblast the surface of the composite and also sandblast the very edge of my crown. Hopefully, at that point, you have some ceramic glaze in that area. Once that has been done, go ahead and thoroughly clean it. I usually use a steam cleaner to do so. There has been some arguments on whether you should use steam or should not. I still use it. What I do afterwards is I will actually place the uh, denture into a dehydrator for about 10 to 15 minutes and I will uh, completely desiccate the uh, prosthesis. Also, when I'm using the steam cleaner, I'm not placing the steamer directly onto the surface. I'm kind of keeping it away slightly just so I'm not creating that huge change in temperature. Once you have completely cleaned and dried your prosthesis, you can go ahead and place the optiglaze uh, over the surface of the composite at right at the CEJ of the actual crown. Make sure you're utilizing a brand new brush or a very clean brush when you do so because optiglaze does not like any kind of contamination. Once I've done that, what I will do is we'll cure it in my Labolai Duo for a minute and a half. I will actually also apply the glaze on the intaglio surface as well. Even though 
the uh, trilora material is completely inert and does not react with tissue or anything else. The reason why I'm applying OptiGlaze is to protect the margins between the composite and the actual trilor. Once the glaze has been cured, you can do a couple of things. You can either leave the restoration as is, or you can polish the crowns and the glaze to give it a more natural shine. I utilized the Renford Zirconia Oxide Polishing Paste and actually used it both on the crowns and the glaze itself. After that, all you have to do is clean your restoration, disinfect it, and it's ready for delivery. What I like about this type of prosthesis is that it's easily serviceable. If you have some issues with composite, you can either fix it chair side or you can fix it in the lab. When it comes to crowns, because they're individual crowns, it is fairly easy to replace them also either chair side or in the laboratory because usually these are a CAD CAM type of restoration. You're able to mill a brand new crown and cement the chair side simply by fixing the composite around it. Hopefully this video has showed you guys some of the steps necessary in order to create this uh, type of restoration. And as always, thanks so much for watching and good luck.